Welcome back to Sunday School. If you have a candle, I'll invite you to get that ready for when we light the Christ candle. Well, we are starting an exciting new series in Sunday School. We're talking about the Trinity. Now, that's a big theological word that we use to describe God, because God appears to us in different ways. We have God the Parent, sometimes known as God the Father. We have God the Son, which is Jesus. And we have God the Holy Spirit. And all three of those are equally God. That's a big concept. So for the next three weeks, we're going to be exploring what that means and different ways that we can think about it so that we will know more about God. If you have your candle, I'll invite you to light your candle with me as I light the Christ candle. Today we light the Christ candle to remind us of the presence of God, Parent, Son, and Holy Spirit with us now and with us at all times. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day. And thank you for our time in Sunday School. We ask that you would prepare our hearts for what you have for us today. Please bless my parents, my teachers, my family and friends. In the name of God, Parent, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Enjoy your Sunday School lesson, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Hello, good to be with you today. The next few weeks we're talking about the Trinity and today in particular, in particular, we're talking about God, one of the three parts of our Trinity. So the story we're going to hear today is the story from our Spark Bible called Manna, Quail and Water. And this is the story of Moses who's helped free the people from Egypt and they're walking through the desert and they're trying to find their way to the promised land. And this story, I like the story. It helps us think about the ways we experience God in our lives, our experience of, of God, the way God is with us on our own journeys. So let's hear this story this um, together today now. God loved the Israelites and their leader. The leader was Moses. God promised to bring the people to a place where they could build homes and live happily. They had never lived outside of Egypt before, and they were afraid. But God went with them, and as they walked long and far to the place God promised, God journeyed all the way along as well. Traveling was hard and tiring. Along the way, the people became hungry. They complained to Moses. I'm so hungry, one boy cried. I wish we could go back to Egypt, whined a little girl. At least we had food to eat there. Oh, her stomach growled. The people missed their dinners of meat and bread. The Israelites didn't know that God heard them, heard them complaining. And that evening, something strange happened. Tiny birds called quail appeared everywhere. God had sent them quails so the people could eat. You see? There they are down at the bottom. I see those little birds running through my neighborhood sometimes too. The next morning, the ground glistened with fresh dew. Even after the sun dried up, there was still something covering the ground. It looked like bread had rained down from heaven. It was manna. The manna looked like tiny seeds and tasted like bread. The people ate and ate. Every day God sent manna and quails so the people had food to eat. The Israelites kept traveling toward the place God promised. After a while, they ran out of water. And even though God had given them food where they were, when they were hungry, the people still complained. My mouth feels dry like a desert, sobbed a child. See the desert behind me? Imagine how, how thirsty you would have been. The people were thirsty. This time, God told Moses to hit a rock with his staff, his long walking pole. And when he did, 
Water gushed out of the rock. The people had more than enough to drink. God gave food and water to the Israelites every day. God took care of the people, just like God promised. Here's our story. Our, our pictures. Can One more time. Can you see them? There we go. If I go back a bit. There's the manna in the grass and Moses hitting the rock with his staff. What part of that story did you like best? What was your favorite part? I wonder, I wonder what God is saying to us in this story. And what things do you ask God for that God provides for you? Let us say thank you to God for that. Thanks for listening. Hello, friends. How are you today? I have just washed my hands and I've got a wooden spoon and an egg and a couple of ingredients in front of me. Can you guess what we're going to do? If you guessed baking, you got that right. For the next three weeks, we are gonna talk about things that have threes in them. And I wanted to share a three ingredient recipe with you today. It actually has four because I love mine with salt, but you could do it with just three. So today we are going to make our very own pretzels. What you need is one cup of your favorite self-rising flour. I'm gonna put that in here. I like to save just a little bit in case I need, we make our own flour foam, so I just made some, um, in case I need it for dusting after. So I put one cup in my mixing bowl, here we go. And then you need half a cup of Greek yogurt. I measured it out for you in advance, so this would go a little bit quicker for you to see, but I have half a cup of Greek yogurt, and I'm just gonna plop it in. <laughs> that made a fun sound. And then I have one of these little babies. You know what this is? It's an egg. That's right. Make sure you don't get any shells. For this recipe, you're going to need to turn your oven to 400 degrees. So you might want to have an adult help you with that step. Okay, you're going to put all three of your ingredients together in a bowl and you're going to stir and stir and stir and stir and stir some more. This is going to be a pretzel dough. So it's got to be extra, extra stirred. It's amazing how those recipes, those ingredients all work together. We talk about the Trinity. We talk about three aspects of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have you ever had a pretzel? You know how pretzels make kind of a three shape too. I thought it would be perfect for today. So I'm going to put that extra flour out on my countertop here that I've cleaned. And then I can roll out my dough. Maybe I'll just add the rest in there. It should be kind of sticky, but mostly in a big ball. Okay. See? Plop. Get to use my hands on this one. And you're gonna roll it out into a sheet. You can do it with your hands though. I hmm, wish you could see what I was doing. Let's see. Can you see that now? Okay, I adjusted my camera angle a bit so you could see my counter a little bit better, but you can't really see my head, so I'll try to squish down. Roll this in the flour. I'm gonna take about a quarter of it. There's enough dough in here to make four or maybe five pretzels. And you're gonna roll it into a nice long snake. A normal flour would work a little bit better for this, but we used a oat flour at our house. Self-rising flour because we have some allergies, so it works better for our family. So you see my long snake? Now I'm gonna twist it into a pretzel shape. Kind of looks like a heart, but it bends around and twists into three pieces. There we go. I'm going to transfer that. I have a baking sheet ready to go, and my oven is at 400 degrees, so I'll set that on there. Okay. 
Looks yummy. Okay, I'm gonna make one more. Roll it into a nice long snake. Twist and roll and twist and roll. kind of pinch the edges together in all the spots. I wonder if I can hold that up for you to see. See how I did that? Three spots, reminding us of the Trinity. Okay, remember how I said there was kind of four ingredients? Last one isn't necessary, it's just for taste. I like to put a little bit of kosher salt on top of mine. I think it makes it extra yummy. Put that on. I'm gonna put these in the oven for about 12 to 14 minutes. I'll meet you back here then, okay? Oh, the oven's hot. Make sure you have an adult or oven mitts or both. Remember, 12 to 15 minutes at about 400. See you in a minute. Okay, friends, we waited our 15 minutes and our pretzels are out of the oven. They look really tasty, if you ask me. Look, looking just like pretzels. They've cooled off a bit, and I brought a couple taste testers in. This is Taryn and Kinley. You ready to try these pretzels, girls? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Okay, everyone, enjoy your pretzel making.